Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a chocolate dome cake and this is what it looks like. We have three layers of sponge cake sandwiched together with a chocolate mousse and fresh raspberries and then we're going to cover the whole cake with a chocolate ganache. I mean this is such a great like special occasion cake. So we're going to start, the first thing is to make our sponge cake. So preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then as this is a dome cake, so the sponge is actually, we're gonna bake it in a stainless steel bowl to give us that dome shape. So you will need a seven cup, which is 1.6 liter stainless steel bowl. And then what we wanna do is we're going to butter and flour it. So I just melted a little bit of butter and then I'm just using a pastry brush and let's do the bottom and sides with the butter. And then, yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to take some flour and just you know, a little bit. And then what you want to do is just kind of swirl the bowl to get the flour all the way around. And this will help us, help prevent the batter from sticking to the bowl and make it much easier to release. So once you've done that, then, I mean, normally I do this over the sink, but then you want to tap it like so, and that's your bowl. So. Let's get that out of the way. So we're just making a really basic sponge cake. So you will, if you're using an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment or you could use a hand mixer. And what you will need is four large eggs and have those at room temperature because they'll beat up much better when they're at room temperature. You don't want to use cold eggs here. So four large. And then you will need one cup, which is 200 grams of granulated white sugar. Let's pour that in there. And then what we're going to do is beat these two ingredients together on high speed until your, the batter is really thick and fluffy and it'd be like a really pale yellow in color. Now that will take probably five or probably closer to 10 minutes. So. It's going to take a long time, so don't worry. Okay, so took a while, but this is what you're looking for. You see, it's beautiful, pale color. It's very thick, and when you see how it kind of falls back down, like that so that's what you're looking for so now I like to add a little flavoring so I'm going to add one teaspoon four grams of pure vanilla extract and I'm just going to beat that in okay so that's it's our batter so now we're going to of course we need some flour so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to switch this over to, you don't have to do this at home, but just so you can really see what I'm doing. Switch it over to this bowl. So now what we're going to add, you will need three quarters of a cup, which is 90 grams of cake flour. And you will also need just a little salt, about a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram. And you will need some kind of sifter. I'm like, you just use a strainer or an actual one of those sifters, whichever you have. And then what we're going to do is sift the flour over the top of the batter and then fold it in. You don't want to add all the flour, so I'll just add maybe, you know, a third of it. Sift it over the top. And I'll just add my salt. And then you could use either a wire whisk or I'm just going to use my spatula and just fold it in. And you want big strokes and kind of round. 
We don't want to do this in the mixer because what we don't, we, be, we, um, we put a lot of air into the batter, so what we don't want to do is deflate that. So that's why I'm doing it by hand. So just kind of move it around. You want to make sure that flour is folded in. And then I'll add a little more. Again, make strokes. Make sure you get to the bottom of the bowl and up and over. That's why it's good to have a like a wide bowl like this. So you can really get that mixed. And then I just have a little more. As you can see, this is really an easy sponge cake. Not a lot of ingredients. You will notice there's no butter, there's no oil. So make sure all that flour is mixed in. We don't want any pockets. That looks good. So now pour it into our bowl. Oh, gorgeous batter. Now you could make this cake, because this is a multi-layer, multi-step cake. You could make the, the, the actual, this part of the recipe, make the cake the day before you're going to assemble the uh, dessert. That way you can kind of break up the steps. And now I'm just, I like to just you know, run it through in case there's any bubbles. Smooth the top. Just kind of tap very lightly. So now we're going to bake our sponge cake. I find, you know, everybody's oven's a little different. About 50, 55 minutes. So what you're looking for will have risen. It'd be nice golden brown with a little bit of a crust on the top. And a toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean. Okay, our sponge cake is done. As you can see, it's risen. If you touch it, it's kind of like a hard crust and a toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean. Now, what I like to do to make sure that the cake doesn't deflate is I actually turn it over on my rack and I'm gonna let it cool like that. And I'm gonna let it completely cool. And I, as you can see, I've kind of double stacked my racks just to get the the, the um, cake up a li little bit so the air can circulate underneath. So we're going to let that cool completely and when we come back we'll take it out of the pan. Our cake has cooled so now we want to remove it from the pan. So I just t take a spatula, you could take a knife and just run it all the way around just to make sure it's not sticking. That's good, and then cross our fingers, <laughs> and there we have it, our dome cake. So now it's still a little warm. I'm gonna let it finish cooling. At this point, you could cover, and once it's cooled, you could cover it and store it for a couple of days if you like, and when we come back, we will uh, make our chocolate mousse. So now, to assemble our dessert, the first thing we need to do is take your stainless steel bowl, that 7 cup, 1.6 liter um, stainless steel bowl, and just line it with a piece of plastic wrap and have a little bit of an overhang. And then, we are, the sponge cake, because it's a, like just a basic, doesn't have any fat in, you know, doesn't have any oil or butter, we are going to soak the layers with a with the syrup. So the syrup I'm using is two thirds of a cup, which is 160 milliliters of orange juice. Now you could use your favorite commercially made orange juice, or you could use freshly squeezed, whichever. And taste, if you need to add a little sugar, then do so to get it to the taste you like. And then I like to add a little uh, Grand Marnier one, I'm adding about a tablespoon. You could leave that out or you could add more, less, and then just give that a stir. 
and that will be that's what we're going to brush our cake layers with so you will need a pastry brush I'll put that aside and then for our cake we need to cut it into three layers so you will need a sharp knife and then I've already done this, but I mean, really, you just got to divide it into thirds and just cut right across. So there you have one and then two. Doesn't that look nice? And, you know, the amount of syrup we're, we will need for our cake will depend whether you, it's freshly made or a day or two old. So just keep that in mind. So now what we're going to do for our chocolate mousse... This is just basically whipped cream and we're going to add melted chocolate to our whipped cream. So in a heat proof bowl, I like stainless steel and you will need a saucepan to simmer in water, but um, just put five ounces, 140 grams of a good quality, either semi-sweet or bittersweet chocolate, whichever you prefer, and then just coarsely chop it and then what I like to do, because you're adding the melted chocolate to whipped cream, that can be a little tricky sometimes, and you don't, we don't want our chocolate to seize. So what I like to do is take, because you will need one cup, which is 240 milliliters of heavy cream or heavy whipping cream. So what I like to do is just take a couple of the tablespoons of the cream and add it to our chocolate before we melt it. And I find that just, it helps to prevent that seizing later when we add the melted chocolate to the whipped cream. So I'm just going to put that over simmering heat and let that melt. Okay, so our chocolate has melted, so let's remove that from the heat. And then we're just going to set that aside just to cool a little because it's, it's a little warm. So uh, wait, my fingers are there. So now what we're going to do is whip our cream. So in a large bowl, I'm going to pour the rest of our cream in there. And then I like to add like a little bit of sugar. So maybe about a tablespoon, about 15 grams. Add more or less. And then I'm just going to whisk it until it comes to stiff peaks. Now, if you don't want to do this by hand, because your arm will get a little sore, then, you know, by all means, use your stand mixer with the whisk attachment, or even just use your hand mixer. Okay, so we're at stiff peaks. <laughs> so now I'm going to just take, I'm, I want to lighten that chocolate a little, so I'm just going to take like a bit and quickly, and do this quickly, <laughs> whisk it into our melted chocolate. That'll lighten it and then get the temperatures of the two more the same. And then I'm going to add, add a little more. And again, whisk it in. Let's see, let's start to lighten it. And the rest. Okay, well, that whipped cream. There we go. Oh, so good. That looks good. Make sure I get up to the bottom there, get all that chocolate and cream mixed together. Now, if you found that your, you know, when you mixed it, maybe your chocolate was a little warm and this is a little too soft, just pop it into the fridge. So we're going to assemble our dessert now. So have our bowl and you will also need about six ounces, 170 grams of fresh raspberries. So just take your top, 
piece of your cake and just kind of press it into there. And then we want, let's give that a quick stir, we want to brush that layer with our syrup. And that's not only going to keep like moisten our cake layer, but it's also going to add a really nice orange flavor. Now, like I said, the amount depends if you made the cake a couple days ago, of course, it'll be a little uh, drier. So you might have to add a little more of the syrup than if you just freshly made the cake. So you just want to make sure it's all moistened. Don't get too carried away. That looks good. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to take maybe about a third of our chocolate mousse. And you know, you just want a nice layer on there, like so. That looks all right. And then you can just, I mean, we just use the back of a spoon and just kind of spread that out. Try to get it even. Looks good. And then, if you like, I mean, you don't have to, but I like raspberries, so why not? You could take some of the fresh raspberries and just put them on top of your mousse like that. I just think the, the cake, the, the orange syrup, chocolate mousse, raspberries, I mean, perfect dessert. It's so pretty looking. Okay, that looks about right. So then we'll take the, now if your cake is especially dry, you know, it's been a few days old, what you might want to do is you could brush this layer with just a little bit of syrup. And then put that on top of there. Just Kind of press it down gently because we want those layers compacted. And then again, I'm going to brush with the syrup. That looks good. A little more. Then we're going to put, spread the rest of our chocolate mousse. Looks good. And I'm going to add some more raspberries. Press them into the chocolate there. And one more for good luck. And then we got the final layer. So again, put that. Just press it down. And then I like to, because that's a that top layer is a little crusty, so I give that a really good soaking of the orange juice. And then I'm just gonna wrap, take my the ends of this plastic wrap. And I'm going to wrap it up and put it into the fridge. Now you want this, we are going to cover the whole cake with some chocolate ganache, but we want our whole cake here to firm up. So I would, you know, you could do this the day before up to this step and then put it in the fridge overnight, or at least let it sit in the fridge for a few hours before you um, cover it. So when we come back, we will cover it with the ganache. So next we're going to make our chocolate ganache. So in a heat proof bowl, put five ounces 
that's 140 grams of a good quality semi-sweet or a bittersweet chocolate. As you can see, you need to finely chop that. And then in a small saucepan, I'm going to put half a cup, 120 milliliters of uh, heavy cream or heavy whipping cream. And again, that's cream with about a 35% butterfat content. And then I'm also going to add about one tablespoon, 13 grams of butter. And then, whoop, sorry. <laughs> and then I'm going to heat this just on medium heat, just until the butter melts and the cream just, well, you start to see bubbles around the edges. It's almost at a uh, boil. Okay, so our cream, whoop, I'm going to take that off. <laughs> As you can see, you don't want it quite that. <laughs> you want it just until the bubbles start to uh, around the edges, but that's okay. I'm gonna improvise here. So just pour that over your chocolate, and then we're going to just gently stir it until our chocolate is all melted and smooth. And then if you like, which I'm going to here, I'm going to add about half a tablespoon of Grand Marnier, just to give it a little orange flavor. If you don't want to add alcohol, just leave it out. Or you could add something else like a cognac, brandy, rum, whatever you like. So I'm just going to keep stirring this until everything's melted. And then I'm just going to let it sit for a few minutes to firm up and cool down. And when we come back, we're going to finish off our dessert. So to finish off our chocolate dome cake, you will need a baking pan with your, a wire rack sitting on top. And then unwrap your chilled cake. And then what I like to do is just put, use a cake circle, it's just a piece of actually just a piece of cardboard and put it right on there because then it makes it easier to move the cake. You don't have to do this, but I just find it a little easier. And then just put your rack and flip and remove the pan and, and there is our chocolate dome cake. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so, I mean, if it wasn't, if you had a little rough spot, you could always just take a spatula and just kind of smooth it out. But then, you know, I think that looks pretty good. There we have that. And then we have our ganache. So we're just going to pour our ganache over the top of the cake. And that's why we have the baking pan. So if any excess, it'll end up, just put that, it'll just fall into the pan. So I like to pour it over like in the center and just around because I really don't you don't want to um, see if I can see what I'm doing here I don't like to if you can it's better just let it to not touch it with your spatula so I'm gonna see if I can do that here that look beautiful there. I'm just going around and making sure. As you can see, we're going to have a little extra ganache, as you can see. That looks good. I'm happy with that. So I'm not even going to, just going to kind of shake that. Looks gorgeous. So what I'm going to do is take my, try to take your spatula underneath that cake circle and just move your cake a little because we're going to let it sit a while on the rack and we don't want it to stick. So we'll just move it away from where there's some chocolate like so. And then I'm going to let that sit. Now you will see that there is some leftover ganache. Don't get rid of that. What you're going to do is Put it through a strainer because there is some crumbs. Put it back in your bowl, cover it, put
put it in the fridge and then once it gets nice and firm then we can make like here on this one little chocolate truffles so just form it into balls and then um, roll it in some cocoa powder and then that way you can use it to decorate the cake now i like to leave my cake to sit here for a while so that ganache can firm up and then just use a really large spatula you can get that under there and transfer it over to your serving platter or or a cake stand like this whatever you however you want to serve it and then put it into the fridge to chill you know you can do it several hours before serving or really i often uh let this sit overnight because that way you know the the uh the syrup has time to soak into the cake and all the flavors kind of you know mingle and so it's a great do ahead dessert which i like so if you're having a dinner party you can make it the day before so i we're gonna I'm, i made this one actually yesterday so that's the one we're going to try. Now, I like to take the cake out of the uh, fridge, you know, maybe 15 minutes at least before you're going to serve and serve it and cut it because that way that uh, ganache will kind of um, not be as hard. But if you, you can dip your knife into hot water, dip it in and then wipe it off and then cut it. That also will help cut through that ganache a little easier. So just take your knife. I did take this cake out about a half an hour ago. So it's going through pretty easily. And always, let's see if I can get this. There we go. Always wipe your knife off between cuts and that way you get a really nice clean cut. So as you can see, you can decorate the outside with your um, truffles. You could just, with more fresh raspberries, you could dust the top with some cocoa powder if you like. You know, there's lots of ways. And now, let's, so doesn't that look gorgeous? You got the sponge cake, the chocolate mousse, and you see the fresh raspberries. And then, of course, that gorgeous uh, chocolate ganache. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> you know, because I made it yesterday, that orange syrup has really nicely soaked into the cake and flavored it. And then, of course, chocolate, chocolate mousse, chocolate ganache, and then the fresh raspberries, I think, really adds to it. So, you know, if you have a special occasion, try this cake. Everyone will love it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.